Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. Before I start this video, I'd like to point out that they might cut up this video to try to confuse things and try to make it sound like I'm confused, but I'm not. In this video, I'll show you definitively that I'm Christ, and if you have an open mind and you're not racist, you should be able to quickly see that I'm right. By the time we get to five minutes or so, you should be able to see by the way I approach this, uh, my reference to my top martial arts challenge, and my first top martial arts challenge was, you know, in uh, 2012, so I have over 10 years. So I was May 2012 of top martial arts challenge, and my latest one is $60,000 uh, if I'm not compensated, $5 million if I am, you pay nothing if you lose, you get $50 just to show. People don't make challenges like that ever. It's unheard of in American history. It's unheard of in world history because I've proven that I'm Christ and I've defeated every challenger and I have world record speed on record and 22 witnesses to them persecute me. So what kind of a person who's mentally ill takes the time to get 22 witnesses on record and record them, okay, to prove that they're sabotaging me, fuming me, and keep in mind, there's a lot of people who are witnesses who aren't willing to come forward that I've tried to reach out to. So it took quite a bit of effort and organizing to accomplish that. And so it did to accomplish gathering these scriptures together and many, many days of analyzing it to definitively prove that I'm Christ and to checkmate them with their own Bible and to prove that the Bible has superimposed the Jewish people on the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order. So let's get into this, shall we? Exodus 15.3, God is a warrior. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. So it goes Genesis, Exodus. The second book in the Bible makes it clear that God is a warrior. No scripture in all of the Bible can ever contradict this. So we're talking about a warrior spirit. And Exodus predates technology like armor and cannons and guns and tanks and so on and so forth. So God is a martial art order. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was the God, and the Word was God. Proverbs 22, 28 through 29. It talks about not moving an ancient boundary stone, and one who is skilled in his work will serve before God. He won't serve before officials of low rank. So someone who's the top martial artist ever, obviously and logically, will serve before God. In what capacity? Well, Christos means the anointed one. We know that from Psalm 89 on top of everything else, where it says that God anointed a warrior, speaking about David. Okay, David, whose name, De, Vi, D, okay, is a character in a story that has not been proven to exist and because of the degree of influence that the church has and social clubs have and the history of Eurocentrism and scientific racism, they can never truly meet the burden of proof to prove that he did. Now, why would God set the situation for that to be the case? Because David did not actually exist. The Bible is a story with a moral. Just like the cloud is figurative, just like water is figurative, is used as uh, the water for well-being, um, righteousness, okay, peace for people in Revelations, the prostitute is sitting on water. We see this time and time again that that is the Bible style to use parables and riddles. In fact, Proverbs 1 talks about Proverbs is a book to help you to interpret the parables, the riddles, and the sayings of the wise. Psalm 18 should prove it definitively. It says, God trained his hands for battle. God, not any martial arts system, the military, the police, but God. That's why these people sank to the level of trying to take my credit when I haven't trained martial arts with them since, oh, maybe 1997, and I didn't train with them for that long. Psalm 19. It says, the bridegroom, the champion, okay? The son is like a bridegroom and a champion, rejoicing to run his course, okay? So they're saying that the bridegroom is a champion. And Psalm 18 talked about God trained the king's hands for battle, so he is a warrior champion. Psalm 24 says the Lord Almighty is mighty in battle. John 10 says that the works of Christ testify about him. This part is key. Write down John 10. If there's any confusion, that should clear it up for you. 
He said, do, if you don't believe me, believe the works. So you know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Okay? And that he's been set apart. He says, if, they, if it says that ye are gods to the ones whose scripture came, how much more the one God set apart as his very own. We see in Revelation 22, 16, I believe it is. He says, I'm the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. But he also says in a different part of the Bible, before Abraham, I am. Remember, Jesus is a character in the Bible and he's identifying himself. He says, I am the gate, right? He says, I am something that you don't understand, including the readers of the Bible won't understand unless they put it all together, right? The anointed one, the gate, the light of the world, the good shepherd, the good fisherman, the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star, faithful and true, the son of the almighty, the exact image of the almighty, the spiritual image of the almighty. So by now, I've proven my point a million times over. Let's keep going. Galatians 3.28. Some of you say, well, he's got to be a Jew. He's just cheating the Jews. If I'm cheating the Jews, why does Galatians 3.28 says there's no, no Jew or Gentile? You are all one in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to one who will perform its works. Remember, the Lord is a warrior, and Cush begot Nimrod, and Nimrod was a mighty warrior before the Lord. So they're just works and positions in the divine order, those who are in an order of morality and truth, and, and they cannot be if they cheat me out of my right to lead. Galatians 4 says Jerusalem in the sky is a true Jerusalem and not Jerusalem on earth. 2 Samuel 5, it says that the fortress of Zion is the city of God. And they say in uh, 2 Samuel, I believe it's 5.1 or 5.2, the Jews say to David that you, he was the one who led them on their military campaigns. But remember, it's spiritual military campaigns. He's not General Patton or something. You know, he's somebody who led them on their spiritual military campaigns. Okay? Proverbs 34. Who holds the wind in his fists? Okay, who has gone up to heaven and come back down? I've got, I made a series about this. You know, it's saying, who holds the wind in his fist in New Living Translation? Okay, martial arts. Revelations 1.16. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword, while his face was like the sun. So Revelation 1 starts and says, this guy has a sharp double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. He's talking about being a warrior. He's talking about precise, sharp warrior truths, not confusing riddles in church propaganda. Psalm 106, it says, who can proclaim his mighty acts? Who can proclaim the mighty acts of God? Like in Isaiah, it says, who will you compare me to? Who will you make my equal, so to speak? Who will you say, you say, you know, is some, some racist white guy, some homosexual in the church, you know, like the fairies they've depicted that they call angels? Psalm 45, it says, The most excellent of men is the mighty warrior, the mighty one, riding forth in the, in the cause of truth, justice, and humility, and all especially attractive women are supposed to submit to him, honor him, bow to him, obey him. Jeremiah 20, 11, it says, The Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, like a nerd in church, like people that gang up on a righteous man, like the Klan, like the fraternities in American history, like the white Jews and LGBT community uh, in the slave patrols on the plantations that persecuted black people historically and burned down their churches because they would argue that the black plight was similar to the Jewish plight in the Bible. Manifest destiny and the ships manifest the cargo, the Igbo people, which I am from the royal family of. That's whose destiny they want to manifest. That's why it's a Martin Luther King Day, not an Epstein Day or Silverstein Day or a Goldstein Day, what have you. Not a George Bush Day. Because they didn't commit themselves to moral character and God. Jeremiah, excuse me, Revelation 19 talks about the heavenly warrior defeats the beast. And he's raging war with righteousness and justice, not propaganda and merest white social norms, customs, and traditions. John 1.51 the heavens open up and the angels ascend and descend on the Son of Man. Okay, this is um, this has to do with gathering up the wind with one's fist. So when one does martial arts in the divine order as the top martial arts ever, the heavens, figuratively speaking, open up and the angels or the angles of receiving the Spirit ascend and descend from the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Christos, the Anointed One, the Anointed with the Warrior Spirit of God, the Justice Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth and Righteousness. This is part of why they attempted to lead me astray 
and though all those who lead the upright on a wrong path will follow in, uh, excuse me will fall into their own trap but the blameless will receive a good inheritance is what proverbs says and that's basic justice so even if you couldn't find it in proverbs you see that i'm right by the logic of it proverbs 16 10 through 12 says the divine verdict is on the mouth of a king it says the throne is established in righteousness and the living translation justice and god wants honest me measures and scales and this connects to my universal pinpointing moral precision argument and my focused moral intensity argument. Matthew 5, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in Paul's letters, he says, All who wish to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be uh, uh, persecuted. Proverbs 28, 1 says, The righteous are as, the wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. As a brain surgeon's son and the top martial artist ever, martial, the word martial is marital scramble. Bridegroom, okay, marshal in marriage, right, to engage, to, to be engaged, and what have you, right, to be in the ring, an engagement ring, there's all kinds of cute little wordplay there, and I'm sure when you do enough of it, you see it's overwhelmingly obvious that they've concealed this in their occult system, which includes their mainstream culture as well. So we go to Acts 7.22. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. In all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Whom? Well, wouldn't that mean there, he's educated in Royal African Falcon martial arts? Yes. Because Horus was a deity of Pharaoh. He was the god of war. He was, the god, he was God's son and the deity. And, and he was a, a god of kings, of pharaohs. Okay, so he was educated in these martial arts. Why doesn't it say he was punished for being educated in this? Because... If it was moral, God allowed it. Matthew 3.11. It says, I, uh, as John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful, spiritually powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The fire is the presence of God, the consuming fire of God, the tempest. 1 Samuel 17, 46. Hey, pay close attention. Some of you might still be naysayers. You might accuse me of twisting scripture, which is laughable. It says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Hold on. Did he just say that in a martial art context, that when all is said and done, the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel? Doesn't that mean definitively, as that's David saying, and Jesus said he's the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star? Doesn't that mean definitively that martial art works? Prove it. Well, what happens when you couple that with John 10? What about the one who God set apart as the top martial artist ever? And why doesn't the Bible say, hey, if someone's the top martial arts ever, do X, Y, and Z. Because it goes without saying, that's Christ. 1 Samuel 17, 51. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine sword and drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged. Kind of like brain surgeon, right? Surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. Their dead were strewn along the Sharam road to Gath and Ekron. Now, tell me, why did they surge forward? Because the gate in which the Spirit of God came through had acted in a martial manner and the army came into that spirit in, in a certain consistent way consistent with truth versus the con micah 3 8 but as for me i am filled with power with the spirit of the lord and with justice and might to declare to jacob and his excuse me to jacob his transgression to israel his sin and of course we see the word play with spear right a spear to spirit and the spirit of god spar it spirit spirit i can go on and on i actually have you know, several other pages in this that talk about this stuff but um we're at 1439 it doesn't let me up a little more than 15 minutes so i'm going to leave it there i feel like i did a good job here if you have any questions uh please ask me um i'm sure we can all agree with 22 witnesses it is stupid to say that i'm crazy and that more accounts for more than accounts for any kind of anger and so on and so forth or any 
Oh, I'm out of time. Thank you.